Episode of the Collective Podcast, episode five. We got this far. This far, no farther. <laughs> yeah. uh, my bad attempt at a joke, but um, yeah. So we got some uh, good reviews on the Chris Marcianti episode that happened two episodes ago, which was about a month ago, month and a half ago. Uh, and it still feels like it's yesterday. Oh yeah, um, which it wasn't, kind of. Maybe let's not let's not. Let's not change the uh, exploration of... Uh, Let's not yeah. pretend to Let's say it was pretend. a great interview or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it was. Chris, Chris, is, Chris is awesome. No, he's Chris. the man, though. Love Chris. Big ups to Chris Marciante. Oh, uh, we're definitely going to have him back on. Definitely Absolutely. Because uh, I'm probably going to have him back on. This is a long time, but there's going to be some other time in between. I'm definitely going to have him on again in October after the Halloween new Halloween movie comes out, which we'll be talking about later in the episode. Absolutely, and I wanted to make one point on this as well because I want to see what you guys think in terms of Chris Marcianti and Joe Volante debating about Star Wars on Joe's premiere episode. What do you guys think about that? Let us know in the comments. Definitely in November <laughs> for that one. But um, uh, so anywhere in between now and October, I'm going to try to get Chris back on because I had a wonderful idea, something that me and Chris and Jerry and you, you can do is... Uh, uh, last Christmas, I bought. Uh, I didn't buy. I got a. Um, I got a movie trivia game, which Ooh. was just had uh, flashcards, and it's just movie trivia. And I figure, what a great way to get Chris back on. Him and me can argue and, tri- and trigger each other. About <laughs> and, time. Uh, and uh, uh, Jerry, you can question us, and we'll try to get the right answers and see who has more movie knowledge. Put the unity and community. So you're asking me to uh, mediate the conversation because yeah, you know again. I'm gonna favor Chris over you. Oh yeah, of course. But which Chris, which Chris, uh, which Chris do you, do you like more? <laughs> Who do you think? Uh, definitely Marcin Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but the uh, Black Sun episode which just premiered at this point that we're taping it, taping this was yesterday. It was an hour and fifteen minute episode or somewhere around that, which I thought was pretty good. There's two companion. There's a companion video if you just want to watch. The movie and just hear us bullshit on it and listen to Jerry's really random comments. Um, With jokes as good as yours. Oh, yeah. Hear my really bad impersonation of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, Mike and everything. But yeah. Michael Lee Cook. Oh. 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 <laughs> I will jump up the ladder. You don't have to worry about it. It's fine. I'm over exaggerating his accent. Shout out to Michael Lee Cook, as we always shout him out. He's a beautiful man. Yes. Um, my birthday was two days ago. Jim. Yeah, I don't want to uh, overclap too much on that one. Yeah, I'm uh, for the viewers. I'm a uh, thousand three years old. No, I'm no shit. I, I, I just turned twenty eight. Uh, yeah. Uh, we had a celebration yesterday with my friend Jimmy. We had video game night. Um, now. I'm going to exaggerate this, guys. I just want to say something real quick about Jerry. Who's Jerry, he? Jerry has never played... Oh, wait. I exaggerate. Jerry barely plays video games. He hasn't played a video game since, like, the N64. And, since 2002. Yeah, yeah. So, like, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. That was the last like, game yeah. I was obsessed with. I threw away my PS2. So, last year... And I wish I had Larry with us, because Larry ha- has can tell the story the best. But I'm going to try to... Uh, 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 You're going to out Larry Larry? Yeah, I'm going to try to out Larry Larry. Um, so, Jer- so we played Mario Party. I bought the EverDrive, which has every single, which has the whole catalog of N64 games and some mods and some games that were never released. So we played Mario Party 2. This happened last year, and we had the rematch yesterday. But we played Mario Party 2 last year. And Jerry, he just likes to fuck around or whatever, doesn't... He As was always. like, oh, you know, I'm just going to half-ass play this. So within the last I'm five turns... I'm surprised you're giving me that much credit, yeah. by the way. So the last five turns... This is what Jerry does. This is this is Jerry Random. First round, and I'm sure Larry's going to... I'm sure I'm going to get text from Larry as soon as soon as I mess this up. But I'm going to try the best. It's the round... The fifth round... There are five rounds left in the game. The first round, 
Jerry landed on a random space. He got a star. Yay me. Then he landed on the question mark. No, was it the qu- No, he landed on the um the treasure, which is the green uh uh chance button or whatever. It's sad how I can't even yeah. help you with your story because I don't even know what you're talking yeah. about these terms. Yeah, and yet you won. Uh and he got the genie bottle. So he used the genie bottle to go to uh Toad. To get another star. Who was Toad? You or Nicole? No, Toad, no. The, you, you, you don't play Toad. Oh. You don't play Toad. So you go to Toad. <laughs> this, this, go, is, this goes to show that this is true. You go to Toad, <coughs> and he gets another star. Then he goes, then he lands on Boo, the ghost, and he steals another star. That's not the best part about this. This the is best a part hero's journey, is, guys. We run, the game is over with, and Toad is giving out all the, all the stars at the end, all the bonus stars. And Jerry gets the um, another star uh, for something else, and he gets another star. So Jerry wins last year out of sheer dumb luck. Very big yeah. emphasis on dumb, by the way. Yeah. Now yesterday, it looks it looked like Jerry was gonna make a repeat performance for like the first half. <laughs> for of like it. the first and I, and rounds. again, I have no idea yeah. what I'm doing. So, so Jerry. Jerry, so we play Space Zone. If anybody to play Mario Party 2, we play Space Zone. So Jerry lands in the center of the uh, of, of the map, causing a laser to shoot out. And everybody except him is in its crosshairs. Everybody <laughs> loses their coins except for Jerry. And then Jerry lands on Toad and gets a star. Then he switches spaces with somebody. Well, I think with Nicole. Yes, and, and she was gets, so mad, by the way. And then he gets another star. And you hear our friend Max in the background laughing, and he's like, "Yeah, you gotta go, Jerry, go, Jerry." He's Jerry. And we're all I felt like Rudy. Jerry. Finally, at the end of it, Jerry lost, but it was it was quite the quite the a series of events. Oh, uh, series of unfortunate events. <laughs> but uh, we had a great time. What yesterday. that I didn't win again? Oh yeah, but we had a great time yesterday uh, with the video game night. Uh, Jimmy's birthday, my birthday, we're like. A day apart. Well, it's like my birthday Sunday. every day. Jerry's birthday's every day. Yeah. So uh, we had your sing till sunrise a couple weeks ago. How oh baby. So you know you're starting to really elevate the platform when you there's, have. There's a trend with this. Every episode, I feel like we're talking about this. But yeah. <laughs> when you have an assembly woman, Nicole Maliotakis, show up last minute at the event. I'm going to say about three hours in, and she was singing, ba la bumba <laughs> and much better than the way I did it. So yeah, I have to give her a lot of big shout-outs for that one. Uh, very nice crowd we had for it. Uh, uh, quite over 50 people raised about $526. And with that being said, I do have another event on June 1st for Joe Broadway's. That's going to be a Friday at 7 o'clock. We have a lot of things going on for that event. We have 15% dinner give back to Sunrise Day Camp of Staten Island. We also have Cornhole, and then at 9 o'clock we have Karaoke, and I'm even going to do awards for my past three events. Um, do, do you remember what some of the uh, awards are? Or? Okay, so here's the premier award, the most improved shower singer. I had this between Joe Volante and three people who don't matter. So <laughs> that's how you get to know who my heart is going to on that one. And we really hope Joe Valanti is going to win this one. Joe Valanti wins. If Joe Valanti wins, maybe his prize will be on to come on the podcast. Yes. yes. <laughs> He'll get a nice little trophy. As long as he doesn't sing. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. he, he's so mad at us. I, 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 can't, I can't tell you how much he's so mad at us that we keep mentioning him on the podcast and he hasn't been on yet. Um, no, it was funny, because yesterday he texted me, he goes, because he was listening to the Black Sun episode, he goes, I never said that, and when did that happen? And I'm like, Joe. Joe, this is fake news. Yeah, it's fake news, not. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, how much money was it all together that you raised? In Between total? those three events? Yeah. Over $2,000 so far. Nice. All within grassroots fundraising. Nice, 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 nice. And it's all for a great cause, to get children to go to, uh, camp for the summer. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So, uh, where, where's Joe's Broadway? Uh, it's on Highland, but where is it? So, that's around the Great Hills area. Do not, remember the, do not remember the address right off the top of my head. However, though, when you look up Joe Broadway South, you'll see Highland Boulevard as the location for it. So, just do your lovely Google searches and get your asses singing. Type it in into your Google machine. 
Yeah, you can't miss it. It's a big sign. Uh, so yeah. So let's move on to some of the stuff that we're going to talk about. Oh today. boy. As we haven't talked enough. Yeah, I think we haven't talked enough about it. Uh, so it's an Avengers heavy episode. Oh boy. Yeah. So I guess I don't have to talk anymore. Oh yeah. So Jay just Jerry's gonna step aside. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> So, it's an Avengers-heavy episode. Uh, first up, the Avengers, spoiler, kills out half of the universe and kills at the box office. And it's set to potentially hit the fabled $2 billion mark. Marking I didn't know that. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Uh, making it the first superhero movie to hit that. And the summer first summer blockbuster hit that milestone. It's not set in stone yet that it's going to hit $2 billion, but it looks like it may come close or might go past it. I think it's going to, though, based on the momentum. Everyone is, like, mind-blown by the movie. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but it's kind of interesting how people leave the theaters in tears and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so I, I did cry at the end because... I was sissy? No. Uh, <laughs> no, I cried because, like, you know, you, you you're... You're with these characters for ten years, and you and you feel like you know the inside and out of their character and their psyche. And when something bad happens to them, something of this scale had bad happens to them, it hits you. Right. And you kind of know what other movies are coming out after this, but at the same time, a lot of people don't have scheduled movies coming out. So you got to sit there, you got to go, "Wow, is is this it?" And it hits you because you're like, "It's the end of an era." But it just opened up in China yesterday. I don't know what the numbers are. Well, there's two billion people in China, so you've already reached your record on that. Oh one. yeah, I don't know, and it and it kills in China like yes. these movies. So it's like I don't know exactly like how much it hit in China so far because it's Saturday. We haven't gotten past the right. box office weekend. Um, but maybe I'll mention that on the next podcast. Hey, you never know. The next the next time we have a podcast on might hit two billion. It might be in China too, by the way. Yeah, and I might and I might and we'll probably talk about it again. But speaking of Avengers Speaking of Avengers, Avengers four, uh, this is according to uh Kevin Feige. He said uh Avengers four is likely likely to be the end of the Avengers movies, as we know it, for now. For now. As in, like, there's going to be no more... Don't you feel like everything's open-ended with them? No, as in, like, not the movies itself. It means, like, the Avengers brand. As in, like, you won't see, like, Avengers. Right. You'll see the other superheroes, but he, but for this... For, for the time being, it probably won't uh, be anymore. And I'm trying to pull the article up, but it won't. it's not cooperating with me. Um... Of course. Uh, He's keeping book. it open-ended. Yeah, comic book. No, but he said something like to the line to, to, to the line that we had a thread of stories with these past 10 years. And you're separating it into two separate uh, things where it was uh, everything before Avengers 4 and everything after Avengers 4. So... With a lot of contracts coming up and everything. Oh, he's taking his headphones off yeah. for this one. Yeah. It's getting real. Yeah, no, I was, um, with everybody's contract coming up, Chris Hemsworth replaced Thor, Chris Evans, Captain America, who has stated that he doesn't want to play Captain America anymore. Not that he doesn't like the character, it's just he's been playing it for 10 years. And he kind of doesn't want to act anymore. He kind of wants to be behind the camera and direct and produce. It's like a grown-up playing the same child, like on a sitcom or something. Oh, yeah. And then uh, uh, Robin Danny Jr., which... Uh, the love I have for that man. <laughs> my, my man guy. crush. My man crush. If they're, if you ride have a man crush. Um, I, uh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, no, he's going to... Uh, Find Christian on Tinder at... No. Robert Downey Jr. No. Um... He's, uh, his contract's up, and, uh, he's open to coming back, but I don't think he's really open to coming back. Um, he, he is the character, Robbie Iron Jr., he is Iron Man. It's definitely safe to say he's the nucleus of making the other characters be who they are. His sarcasm goes a long way in the storyline. If it wasn't for him. For the one and a half movies that I've saw. If, if it wasn't for him. There would be no Marvel Cinematic Universe, so it's very 
it's very um telling well, wasn't he the first like what wasn't his like the 2008 one yeah his was the first got it it was iron man and then and then after that everything else came a came whole to new yeah. world just think i just turned 28 a, a couple days ago and last week was the 10th anniversary so like when iron man came out i was 18 or I just turned 18 um so yeah so that's that's but um I think they're starting all the properties to with Marvel, so they kind of want to take a break from Avengers movies. It's going to go cosmic, so we're going to be having more space fair movies and stuff. But you, you um, can only be in a glass case of emotion for so long. Yeah, I was in a glass case of emotion. Uh, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, which by the time this comes out, it'll be like a month and a half after. So I don't know why I'm, I'm uh, so laid back but, but think of that as a proof of concept though because if people still don't know about that that means it hasn't reached two billion yet. yeah well you can hear my review of the uh <laughs> avengers my brief review of avengers on caputo productions youtube channel or our website which i'll Ooh. promote later which i which we launched Drum roll please Drum roll, please all right here comes another avengers uh uh article my uh, James Cameron, who uh, oh I, James, who I don't like as a as a person, as a human being, just for the things that I hear that he does to his actors and the way he treats people. Mister Ego himself complains about superhero movies, and he wishes that superhero movies would fail, just so he can perch up his little, you know, <laughs> movies and stuff. He goes, oh, I, I wish they would be different so science fiction movies and other ideas can come up. And I'm this... not going to lie, that's a reflection of me a little bit. Yeah. To an extent. Yeah. And I kind of like him now. No. <laughs> <laughs> and he said something along the lines of like, you know, oh, you know, I wish other people would get other ideas and do other things. And we're going to go on my rant in like two seconds. Uh, this isn't the first time he said something like this that he's complained about superhero movies. Uh, he is, he's complained about Wonder Woman, which I don't know why you would complain about Wonder Woman, because her movie was one of the best movies in DC. Uh, it made almost a billion, it hit like 800 million, which is pr really good for the very first solo female driven superhero movie. It was definitely remarkable for sure. Yeah. So he, he complained about Wonder Woman not taking women forward, and that's just weird because I don't know what he, he means by that. But then he comes out and says, oh, you know, he didn't bring women forward like my characters, like Ripley from Alien and Sarah Connor. My characters that I wrote are better than these people. Gee, you go much? I mean, you know, I could go. Jerry's heard me. If rant. only I've known about superhero movies. No, Jerry, Jerry's heard me. Rant. I would love to pretend and to a lot argue of people, with you. And a lot of people hear me complain about superhero, about, not superhero, about James Cameron. I don't like him. Because the sheer fact that he sits there and then he bitches and he complains about other people's works. Oh, you know, it's not as good as my work. You haven't made a movie in over 10 years. The last movie you made was Avatar, which, which is the highest grossing film worldwide, which you cheated. You cheated to get it that Oh, high. yes. I, I know some of the stories. Yeah, you cheated. It cannot be... Uh, Avatar is not the highest gross... In my mind, is not the highest grossing film. Yeah, there was definitely controversy around that. It's... The Force Awakens is the highest grossing film. Why? Because when you keep re-releasing a movie... And extending out... Uh, theatrical releases... It's very easy to hit 2 billion. A typical movie release... It's called promotion. Yeah, a typical movie release is like... Two months... Maybe two and a half months, depending right. on market and whatever. He kept Titanic out for almost a year in movie theaters. And that was maybe the second movie to hit a billion after Jurassic Park. Right. And then it just keeps making and then it just keeps making money because they keep re releasing it. They released it for the tenth anniversary, the twentieth anniversary. It's like enough already. Then Avatar, he kept it out for almost a year too. But Avatar is a little different. I have to give it a little bit of reprieve because Typically, movies, when they release, they have a dip in the next yeah. week in terms of box office. It kind of plateaued up, 
which because oh, because of all like people were looking at it they're like oh my god this is amazing 3d graphics or whatever it was the first of it first of its kind to do so which is why you see the result of it being yeah, 2 billion 2.7 billion oh wow yeah and i'm sure he's going to keep releasing it and it's going to hit 3 billion and just it's going to get ridiculous but as far as i'm concerned the force awakens is the highest grossing the uh box office movie ever because it hit it in its first run all by itself. No re-releases. Speaks volumes. No extensions. And it's the highest domestic. It beat Avatar. It's the highest worldwide. It beat Avatar. It didn't beat Avatar worldwide. But I'm sure... Whatever. I'm sure when they re-release uh, re it. Yeah, I'm sure. But the thing is, is with James Cameron, he ha he's notorious for mistreating um, actors. For example, uh, I forget which movie it was. Might have been The Abyss. Um... He almost drowned Ed Harris. He was underwater and he was drowning. Talk about bleeding yeah. your blood. Yeah, and he comes up and he goes, if you don't get the F back in there, you're fired. As Ed Harris is choking on water. Of course. He fired his DP, I think it was his DP, on um, Aliens. Because the DP had a different, vi different vision of lighting that he wanted. Right. And he got... And and the only reason why the DP didn't get fired was because his whole crew uh, threatened to walk out on him. He's got a hot temper. How you know, old is he now? James Cameron's got to be in the sixties. Oh wow! Yeah, so it's like he's got a he's got a he's got a temper on him. If things don't go his way, you know he's like a child. He's a child. He's a man child. It's a shame when talent just yeah. takes that advantage over you. And for him to complain about, oh, I'm sick of all these sequels, I'm sick of all these movies, I'm sick of all these superhero movies, I want to look him straight in the face and be like, dude, you're not talking about one Avatar sequel, not two Avatar sequels, not three, you're not, not even four. You're talking about making five Avatar sequels. <laughs> and Jerry, I bet I you... I know, five. Yeah, I bet you... Five, six, seven years from now, when those five comes out, if they ever, because he keeps pushing them back, we're going to be hearing them complaining about these Marvel movies. These are, oh, well, they're not as good as my movies. My movies actually have, like, social, con social, you know, connotation to them and whatever. And, oh, and look at me, and I'm so great. No. You have two of the highest grossing films. Doesn't make you the greatest filmmaker ever. It's a two-hit wonder for the music industry. You know who the greatest filmmaker is? Steven Spielberg. He's the greatest filmmaker ever. He's hit every genre. He's the jeter of filmmaking. He's hit every genre except superhero movies. And guess what? He's making a superhero movie. Yeah. Yeah. For DC. So yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, Spielberg's the greatest filmmaker ever. Not, not you, James Cameron. Get off of your perch. Get off of your perch. Step your... step. Take aside your ego. Twitter fingers turn yeah. to trigger fingers. Yes. Yeah. And just realize that you're not, you're not hot shit. Okay, and until you make another movie, shut up. Five billion. That's my, that's my, that's, this has been Christian Caputo ranting about movies. Uh, you know yeah. something? That's actually a segment. Yes. Christian Caputo. I could see that. Ranting about movies. And I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of shit from people commenting. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. James Cameron's you such are, a great They're going to be like, no, you're not like James Cameron. Okay. okay. He made Aliens, which is not even his, because that's a... Uh, Ridley Scott property. Right. He made he made Terminator. I I love Terminator too. Yes, 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 Ian. I like Terminator too. It's the best one, not the first one. I foresee the argument right now. And and Give it five at this days. point, when it gets released, I bet you he's just texted me. Yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. The first one's better. Um. And he made True Lies. That's all. Any every and oh. And the overrated, here we go, all, all, all the trigger fingers on YouTube, the overrated Titanic. Oh, boy. It's overrated. It's an overrated movie. I want to see what Celine Dion thinks about this. <laughs> yeah, my heart will go on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, round of applause for you yeah. on that one. Yeah, my heart will go on. Speaking of moving on. Eh, you like that yeah, story? you're getting good at this, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, Bill and Ted. Jerry, have you seen Bill and Ted? I have not seen Bill and Ted yet. Another movie rant. Drum roll, please, everybody. Jerry! Jerry, uh, get out of your rock or your square. Um, uh, it's like, it's like Welcome to the Sport, Jerry. 
Why can't we put it on right now? <laughs> uh, Jerry loves Welcome to Boost Port. It's his favorite movie. Um, Bill and Ted, they had two movies in the 80s. It was uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I like Bogus Journey because it was the first one that I was have seen Excellent Adventure. I did like that okay. one a lot. Um, so they've been talking about it for about 10 years about making a third one and it's finally hit pre-production. Oh, so baby. Keanu Reeves and uh, the other guy, I can't remember his name. It'll, it'll come to me. They're coming back as Bill and Ted. It's called Bill and Ted Face the Music. Oh man, death is coming back. Can't wait for that. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if they're going to have the other characters, but they're going. It's another time travel movie, and uh, it's going to be great. I have my qualms with Keanu Reeves. Here we go, another rant. No, I love Keanu Reeves. You could, but I could see why people yeah. wouldn't like him for things that he's done. No, and no, you want to know something? I for movies, Keanu Reeves. I have to tell you, is the most humble person on the planet that i've heard of yes you cannot find a better person in the film business. i'm talking about more Keanu roles Reeves. though like more oh, yeah, ro his roles yeah. exactly people find like his roles cranky right. sometimes but but in real life he's the most humble down-to-earth person he doesn't care about oh i have to live in a mansion i have to do this he he's he takes the train he, he, he eats in regular restaurants. He doesn't he doesn't need this like entourage of people. And I respect him for that. Exactly. Yeah. And I think Keanu Reeves is great. I don't think particularly he can act. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> I mean, like he was a person, Keanu. My my opinion is The Matrix is single handedly his best movie and his worst movie. Before you all trigger and start writing comments, hear me out. Everything before Matrix He's actually kind of acted in terms of like he's had a wide spectrum of acting reach. Right. Ever since the Matrix, where he's like, "Well, I'm Neo. I'm this." It's like he's had that monotone voice ever since the Matrix. It's like he's welcoming Christian Bale. Yeah, no, and and I think that for the Dark Knight. And I think that he hit that with the Matrix, and I think that he's tried to do that every time with every movie. Constantine, he's had that monotone of John Constantine. I'm Keanu Reeves. I'm John Constantine. <laughs> uh, the day the earth stood still, I'm Clyde too. And I'm Keanu Reeves. I mean, I'm Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I forget what else he's done. He's done a... Oh, um... John Wick. Actually, I actually have to admit, John Wick is his best movie. You want to know why? Doesn't talk. <laughs> oh! So you it's don't know his, his name face. in that one. It's all in his facial expression. He has a great facial expression range, I think. In terms of like... Better than mine? Yeah. He, 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 <laughs> if he if he's very little when it comes to speaking, he's great. He's great. He's a great actor. But once he starts getting the ball rolling with speaking, he gets a little. And uh, uh, was it Forty Seven Ronin? I think it was. Was his uh, uh was the movie that he did a couple years ago, which I thought was amazing. Um, and then he did uh, uh John Wick. But then he's coming back from Bill and Ted, which I can't wait for just because. I love those movies. Hey, you want to see how monotonous he sounds, don't oh, you? Oh yeah. No, no, no. I think he'll actually <laughs> find. I think he'll actually come back and and be able to uh, rekindle his. Uh, whoa, whoa. I'm 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 Bill. John Wick. I'm Bill S. Preston Esquire, <laughs> and I'm Ted Theodore Logan, and we are wild stallions. Like you and me from Staten Island. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, so I can't wait for that. I don't know when it's supposed to come out. I think two years from now, a year from now. I haven't looked it up. I can't wait for it. Speaking of things that are in developmental hell, which actually got canceled, Jerry. Oh, boy. Tremors. Now, what's funny about this is that as I was listening to the Black Sun episode, I actually mentioned Kevin Bacon. Yes, and yes. It's, and it's so and ironic. And you went on about him for a little bit, Yeah, too. and it's so ironic how, like, now, like, as I was listening to it, I was like, oh, we could talk about Tremors. So they had a TV series that was going to come out for Tremors. I don't know if you've seen the Tremors movies. I only seen one or two. Okay, so um, they are. I have, I'm not going to go off. On I am the, really living under a rock right here. I don't want to. I'm not ranting, but I just want to tell you my love, my absolute love. I'm not a big, like monster movie fan, but it's like these movies, I saw when I was very young, like five. Like, my dad, my dad used to, we had one TV in the house when I was younger, and it was like, my dad had, you know, full, 
king of the movies. Exactly. Of a uh, king of the TV. So like he would put on. That's where I saw the Fifth Element for the first time, which I never knew was the Fifth Element Great until movie. like ten years later. Uh, Tremors was one of them. I watched it when I was when I was very young. And scared the shit out of me. But I love those movies. The, the funny thing about those movies is the first movie takes itself seriously. Yeah. And then the second movie they realized, these movies are campy. We have to embrace the campiness. And then I think that's when they started to like really... It's it's genuine self-awareness. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're self-aware all, all the time in these movies. And they just came out with the sixth movie. Which I think came out already. I, I have to see it. I wasn't a fan of the fifth one that came out because they redesigned the Graboids. But, um, yeah, they redesigned, like, all of the creatures, which I wasn't too particularly happy right. with. Right. But, um, and they did have a TV series out, uh, back in 03, which was, which I was excited about, which I was, eh, then I watched it, it was okay. Yeah. But this one that they were going to come out with, Kevin Bacon was actually going to star in it. And the whole premise of it was was he got married, he left, and then he comes back and he has this hero complex about him. That's like, I saved the town of perfection. And he's a little paranoid and he's trying to relive his glory days. And then you find out, uh-oh, the creatures are back. <laughs> and he's like, no, I know what to do. I know what to do. Everyone's like, get out of here. You don't know what you're talking about and stuff. And I saw the trailer to it and the trailer got released. And then you found out it was canceled. Like, they didn't pick it up for a series. And the trailer looked amazing. And I'm really disappointed that they're not going I'm to sure that disappoints all the cult fans for, like, films such yeah. as that. I mean, you talk about self-awareness, Jerry, or, like, campiness. What, what, um, what movie do you know that midway through, for, like, you know when you have, like, that tense moment and then you have that release of just, like, comedy moments... The first movie had this spoiler alert. It's like thirty years old, but whatever. The uh, there's a moment when they're trying to name the creatures, and the guy's like suckoids. Uh, and he's talking about like all these names, and they come up with graboid because they grab <laughs> it. And then the second movie, they don't come out with a name for the creatures until the third one. But the second one's called Shriekers. That's the second form of creature, and then the third form. That's actually pretty good. And then the third form, Jerry, they're like. Oh, uh, we got to name them. And they're like, what do you mean? It's like, they could fly. How do they fly? They shoot stuff out of their ass. <laughs> so they call them ass blasters. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So, so it's Graboid. Shitsters. Yeah. So Graboid, Shrieker, and Ass Blaster. It's amazing. I mean, I mean, how campy can you get? Now I'm going to watch all of them. I love them. I have them. I'm watch them. I have them all. Uh, Coming soon to a TV near you. Now, move, now moving on to another trailer. Halloween 2008. No, I 2008, thought we were going to get away from one episode not to talk about Halloween, but take it away, Christian. Uh, Blumhouse, they had a... They were at Horicon? CinemaCon? One of the conventions a couple weeks ago, Jamie Lee Curtis came out and showed everybody a rough trailer or like a trailer. And everybody said it was the best trailer that they've ever seen for a Halloween movie, and it's gonna scare the shit out of everybody. And I, I'm scared. It. I want to believe it. I'm pulling back a little bit. I'm tapering my expectations because I've been, I've been hurt before by now. How movies. how many sequels of Halloween has come out so far? Um, I don't want you explaining every one of them now. Okay, I'm not, but you know I am. You're a good boy. But you know I am. Uh, so there's Halloween one. Two, three, four, five, Curse of Michael Myers, H2O, Resurrection, and those other two. So there's ten sequels. This is the 11th movie. Oh, baby. Yeah, and then there's those other two ones that we don't want to talk about. Uh, <laughs> it's like religion and politics. Yeah, it's like, I don't want to I don't talk about those Rob Zombie movies. But, uh, yeah. So, I, uh, uh, it's, I can't wait. I'm definitely going to watch it. Uh, the last one I saw was with was the first Rob Zombie one was with uh, Lou, and we're already making plans to see it. Me and Lou, and, a and, lot uh, from last night at your birthday. Yeah, and uh, we're gonna see it with Jimmy, and we're gonna see it with Ian, we're gonna see it with Chris. I might see it multiple times in the theater. 
Just get that box office up. No. I'll buy popcorn and sit outside. But Blumhouse, I, I feel like from what I've been reading about what I've been seeing, is doing a good job. And they want, side note, this isn't this isn't a topic, but side note, Blumhouse wants to take the rights to Friday the 13th movies and get them backtrack. And I'm like, do it. Oh, wow. Get the rights to it. Do it. And also do Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, Nightmare of, uh, on Elm Street would be very exciting. See, see that, that's the thing. With Rob Zombie, he wasn't a good fit for Halloween, but he would be a good fit for Nightmare on Elm Street or, yes. or Friday Theater Because it I, stood the test of time for, like, yeah. having such a creepy persona, yeah. and I, visually the, speaking. Well, plus, it, they're a lot more gory. Halloween was never about gore. Right. And I feel like... It was suspense. But, yeah. So, uh, we're going to take a break. And when yes. we come back, there's going to be Jerry Heavy... Because all these topics are all Jerry knows. Finally. Yes. An opportunity for narcissism. Yes. So uh, we'll be back with a word from our sponsors. This episode of Collective Podcasting is sponsored by Da Piera. They're on 1970 Victory Boulevard. You like Italian cooking? Absolutely. Well, this is authentic Southern Italian cooking. They have a chef directly from Italy, which is in the city. Um, great Italian food. They have they have pizza, they have um, uh, sandwiches, authentic, real authentic Italian food. Ate that last week, really great. I suggest everybody go and uh, tell them the Caputo Collective sent you. Jerry, we're here for our for our segment that's returning. It's called Weird But True Articles. Oh boy! Woo. This, this is the segment where I read these Weird But True articles and I try to get Jerry's reaction to them. I'm gonna give him the sometimes rest of serious, face on some, every single one. There's sometimes a serious reaction, sometimes a Jerry reaction, and sometimes a I don't know what the hell to think Jerry reaction. That's three very good categories, by the way. So you ready, Jerry? Yes. Okay. First one. Brother, can you spare me a dime? <laughs> nope, said a Nevada state trooper guarding 8 million dimes worth $800,000 that spilled when a semi truck, when a semi truck Wait, crashed. Wait, hold on. It's 8 million dimes. Eight, no, it's 8 million dimes worth $800,000. What the fuck? <laughs> that spilled when the semi truck crashed into a guardrail Tuesday near Las Vegas. Troopers established a crime scene to protect the coins being transported under a U.S. Treasury contract. The driver and a passenger suffered non-life-threatening injuries. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. They were guarding dimes. I Jerry. really don't even know it. I can't believe eight million dimes. Yeah, dimes. So what, what, what would you do with eight million dimes, Jerry? I'd break change. <laughs> so, so Jerry, let let. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. Adri, it's a two-parter. Would you take those eight million coins and go to one of those machines where you put the coins in and then and then and then you get the cash back? Oh, Coinstar. That's, yeah, the Coinstar. That's my hero as far as budgeting. Would you Would you do that? Or oh, or would you Would you do that? Would you hire somebody to like? Okay, I'm gonna put those coins in those rounds. I'm not gonna lie. To go to the bank. As you give me the second the second option to hire somebody is that much more badass, knowing that you have so much in dimes. Oh, God. Second one. Me ouch. Three good doers tried to bottle feed two cats that the humans thought were kittens. They heard mewling. They heard mew, mewing. Meowing? I think it's a misspelling. Meowing in a San Antonio, Texas alley. But the fur babies who bit them and ripped the bottles to shreds turned out to be bobcats. Oh, God. Animal control officers hope to reunite the cubs with their moms. Oh, that's crazy. Jerry, like, that's I, really crazy. Jerry, I know you're not an animal person. No, I'm not for the most part. I love dogs, but yeah. I'm kind of allergic to them. Uh, would you know the difference between a kitten and, and a bobcat? <laughs> As I've never owned a pet in my life, probably not. Okay. But you've been to the zoo, right? Of course. So you know what a bobcat looks <laughs> you, like. What are you trying to say? Like, I'm, I've been totally deprived of my childhood right here? I, I don't know, Jerry. 
Go back to the zoo. Okay. Number three. He's the most honest drug dealer ever. Motorist Barry Hodge, 23, confessed to a $30,000 cocaine operation. <laughs> after cops in Scotland... After cops in Scotland pulled him over for talking on his cell phone while driving. I just want to be honest, Hodge said, said before admitting that he had some coke in a kinder eggshell in the car and more at his Wishaw home, police said. I love the honesty. Now, now, Jerry, you... <laughs> You're like, now, Jerry, you've sold cocaine, right? No, no, now, Jerry. <laughs> I've been pulled over by the cops and gotten tickets. You've been pulled over by cops and tickets. How stupid do you have to be to be like, yeah, officer, I got cocaine. Just gotta be honest. Yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, I, 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 you know what? You pulled me over. I ran a red light. I gotta tell you. It you was be, all because of cocaine. You, 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 you're you gonna give me a ticket for a red light. Red, red light, that's fine. But, you know, give me a ticket for cocaine. I, I got something in the back. Yeah, I'll, I'll substitute it for the red light. Yeah. Number four. Or was it number four? Yeah, number four or five. A Massachusetts state trooper was this dog's best friend. Trooper Nick D'Angelo rescued Dozer, a pup in running loose on the Interstate 190 in Wush, in what Warchest, where, where, wherever. Wednesday. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a segment how to react to his phonics. <laughs> Wednesday by luring him to safety with a piece of homemade deer jerky. Okay, that's just bizarre. I've never that had, is just so weird. I've never had venison. I want yeah. to try venison really bad. But what do you think? Would you lure a dog with some deer jerky? <laughs> if I was like somewhere in Idaho, in like the Midwest of that. Now, now your dad goes upstate. Does he go hunting? Once in a while. Okay. Not, so, he hasn't done it in a long time. So, so if your dad went hunting and caught a deer, the first thing in his mind would be like, I'm going to make jerky. Well, knowing my dad. Yeah. It's probably in that story somewhere. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the last one is, this owl didn't give a hoot about the intentions of a would-be rescuer. Dazed and apparently injured, the great horned owl was scooped up Monday by a motorist from the side of a road in Tucson, Arizona. But the owl awoke and latched onto the driver's sleeve and steering, and steering wheel refusing for miles to let go. What a backseat driver. When it did, the driver summoned authorities who told the public, don't risk getting injured, aiding, don't go, don't risk getting hurt, aiding injured wildlife. <laughs> so Jerry, I know, I know, I know that we have uh, some friends. I'm crying right who now. Who are bad drivers, Joe Flanty. Uh No, <laughs> it's called everyone. Um, you think, uh, you think he'll kill us? If we tell a jail story? I'm just going to keep it paused to see what you think. Yes, kids, tell it. Okay. Uh, I, wasn't there for this. I wasn't there for this. Look, he's good. Look, he. I'm trying. I'm tr what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get Joe a fan base. So in order to tell these Joe stories, I am trying to get him a fan base. You know. Get some fans go. Get I'm, some get some groupies for Joe. I'm at least a fan of Joe. Yeah. Get some groupies. For I ask for his autograph every time I see him, just to see if he knows how to write yet. So they were. I'm sure Mark's gonna kill me, too. But um, so I wasn't there for this. I'm just gonna tell the abridged version of the story. But they were driving back one Saturday. This is like 2011, 2012. I think you were there for this. And oh Joe, boy. And they were coming back from I think Philly or somewhere. And they, uh, Joe was, of course, getting low on uh, gas. Oh, uh, was this when Ian was with them? Yeah. Okay, this was like 2013-ish. Yeah. And they pull, Kyle was there. And Joe pull, I wasn't there, though. And Joe, and Joe pulls off on the highway because he thinks a cop is following him. And they wind up in Compton. And Joe's like, I'm gonna get a... I'm gonna gotta get gas. And there's no gas stations open. Oh, no. It, it, it wasn't that. It oh. was, uh... There was... Some city in Jersey. I, I forgot where. Camden? No, Camden. Camden. Compton. Camden. Camden, Camden New they Jersey. They jumped over Compton. Camden. Straight out of Camden. Straight out of Camden. I messed up the story, thus Joe won't get any groupies. But the the moral of the story is, is make sure you just fill up EDS tank. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, 
So, yeah. Love you too, Joe. So, uh, but, but the reason why I'm telling the story is because, you know, n- 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 nobody grabbed the steering wheel for Joe, did they? I-, I feel like somebody did. Hey, if I was in the car, I would. Yeah, probably not. But, um, <laughs> this has been Christian going off on tangents for no reason. Uh, so, yeah. But, Jerry, here's a, this is not a weird but true story, but... I feel like I should tell you this because this is another reaction that I want from you, which of course the page I requested does not exist, so I'll just tell it to you anyway. A 12-year-old boy steals credit card from his mom, from his parents, and goes and what books a badass. Him, and books himself and books himself a trip to Bali <laughs> after a fight with his mom. Why out of all places? I'm just very curious to know that part of the story. I gotta tell you, Jerry, the the fact that a twelve year old kid is smart enough to book his own shit, smart enough to go, I'm gonna steal a credit card and book myself a trip to Bali all by myself. I'm gonna lay out on the beach. You know what? I you want to know it's what like I bet? We going through puberty. If I had to bet, that kid probably watched Home Alone too. Oh yeah, and said if to not himself, more than that one too. And said to myself, and said to himself, <coughs> I want to be just like. That Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin. And go, and go around New York and uh, get pizza and do whatever. Go to Bosnia. Go to Bosnia. Bosnia. <laughs> Out of all places, Bosnia. Hey, he's got to involve his traveling. You know, 14 is going to go there. <laughs> 15 will go to Colorado. So, Jerry, I'm going to put up the controversial alert. Oh, boy. Controversial Drum roll, alert. please. We've had too many of these. This is, uh, this is more of a you topic, Jerry. Uh, you sure you want to hear me talk? Yeah. So, you're a big music guy, Jerry. I am, I am. Is Kanye crazy? Or is he just trying to promote his new album? And go. He's trying to promote his new album. And I'm going to say, just for a few reasons. One, he knows how to really sink in on propaganda. Whether you're on one side or the other. And something that makes him so intelligent because of it is that he's able to capture those people in a niche market and then just utilize that market for his albums at the same time like i feel like that's the biggest reason yes he probably feels things over time as all of us do it's what makes us human but at the same time though you have to understand that kanye is an is an entertainer first Hmm. so is he sincere with his comments or is he just like oh i'm going to capitalize on everyone or he's just trying to get people to talk about him. I think he's more... I think he's more uh, fraudulent than sincere. So he's just... So he just took advantage of a situation that people don't like the president. And he's just like, yeah, I'm just going to like capitalize on this and try to really get people talking. But I think it kind of backfired because people st- stopped listening to him. But then again, I'm sure people would be like, i got to hear his new album. And they... And I'm not going to lie, because I want to see what he puts out, because I actually am a pretty big Kanye fan. Mm. So for me, when I hear his music, exactly, Christian's uh, mannerisms say it all appropriately. What, what was I doing? Hey, you were you were snacking it in the ass over there. No, I was doing a hot, 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 whatever else. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, but I'm actually a very big fan of Kanye. His first three albums are momentous to me. I've always found them to be such an icon for who he is and I think he's somebody who takes leaps and bounds and understands that there's more parameters to what's in store for you on the other side of the spectrum what what do you think of the uh, Childish Gambino video that came out I actually you know something now Childish Gambino has always had like his history with the same type of controversy just more on a low key level now with him I found the video to be a work of art Mm. Uh, There's this guy named Charlemagne the God on Hot 97, and his opinion is relatively similar to mine, where he was able to touch up on a lot of things with the video in terms of the political climate, some of the issues that are imperative towards, uh, towards minorities in certain communities, and I have to give him credit because he did paint those portraits pretty effectively. So I look at it more as a work of art, and I definitely... I uh, do like the video. Uh, now, there's definitely some things that can trigger people, as sometimes with those personas, when you put them in the highlight, the, you're guaranteed to you're guaranteed to break bounds with it. Mm. 
But you liked it, so... I did overall, yeah. Because it gets the Jerry stamp of approval. Exactly. <laughs> it gets a 4.2 star rating. 4.2, so out of, out of 5? 12 and a half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's, that's, that's it for the topics. We're just going to go into some uh, house cleaning, some personal house cleaning stuff. Um, I thought we were going to do, like, housekeeping rules for the no, studio. No, no, like, yeah. Public like, okay, service so announcement. Gonna, so, so we're going to buy some Windex? <laughs> Oh, by the way, what I didn't mention, which I have to make this little joke. I was going to make the joke in the beginning of the podcast that just popped up in my head because it's in front of me. But, you know, we're in Jerry's Square. Yes. In the uh, collective Times studios. Square. In I will Times not let you back here. Well, you this is, this is the... this pronouncing it. This is the collective studio. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> we're, sitting on, we're sitting at Jerry's uh, uh, table. And you know, you know how people on the dining room table, they have that nice... Uh, fruit basket in front of you. Well, Jerry has a nice basket of uh, of uh, of drugs. Not 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 the drugs that you're thinking. <laughs> he's got he's got some Allegra. Big pharma stuff. He's got obviously. some Sudafed. He's got some ice gum. And look at this, some coupons. So I have some coupons. They're they're act- coupons. now those are actually from like a, a raffle that I bought from the other day. So mm. just to let you know, that's actually a raffle basket. So all my used allergy medicine. All for this play, obviously. Chapstick. Chapstick, come on. How could you go wrong with this? Random red pills, you, you I You got don't know. everything for the past six months of allergy uh, guaranteed. You're going to be allergy immune for the rest of he's your got, life. He's got a Sharpie pen. So when somebody passes out, you just... Exactly. Throw in his face. Hope you sleep are well you tonight. To, are you trying to Bill Cosby me? Nah. Are you trying to, you trying to slip something Not on air, at least, no? obviously. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, what do you think about real quick? What, what do you think about the Bill Cosby? He's eighty and he's got ten years. I thought you were gonna say, "What do you think about your allergy uh, no. raffle basket?" No. It keeps well, me alive of, and well. well. Yeah. Well, what do you What do you think of Bill Cosby uh, getting those? He's an ten, asshole. Well, I mean, he's eighty years old and he's got ten years in jail. I mean, like, come on. But, but at the same time, though, like you, you do countless. Oh no no no! I I agree. Like no, I agree. Felony charges. I agree with the, with the felony <coughs> charges. He's. He's a scumbag, you know. What do you think? What do you think his sentencing should have been? I don't know. Is he being thrown in like jail, jail, federal jail, or is he? You, you know how odd like the celebrity jails are. They're probably gonna be like more privatized. Like the, there's a lot. For example, I'll give yeah. I'll give you this. Like a lot of white collar crimes, yeah. they're usually in more high end jails where like you have more accessibility to things and stuff like that. Well, I. If... Well, if he was a lot younger, like 40, guaranteed, yeah, jail. But it's like, he's 80, so it's like, at least maybe like house arrest. Yeah. For 10 years. At least something that he can't, but it's like jail, jail? It's like, mm. House arrest, I could see. Yeah. I can see where you're coming from on that, but no. Because like, he's 80, because he's 80. It's, but he's but when, you have, when you have those criminalities to mm-hmm. you... For decades upon decades, yeah. you deserve to do your time. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying anybody that does that does deserve to do to do time, and I think he's really hurt his legacy because Bill Cosby really has come out and be like, be this prim and proper, like, pull your pants up, don't do that, don't talk like that. People really looked up to him. People back really then. looked up to him. The Cosby Show. That's where we. <laughs> the Cosby Show is where a uh, little side note about Jerry. Uh, the Cosby Show is where we get Jerry's. Oh God! Is where we make fun. We make fun of Jerry. He has this little thing where he talks to people, and his head kind of goes back and forth a little bit, and it's kind of like the Bill Cosby, like so Rudy. <laughs> you know, when he gets his head going up and he goes back and forth, Rudy. <laughs> Everything in front of me is a pudding pop. Yeah, it's That's a pudding what inspires pop. It. Look at your pudding pop. But uh, no, yeah, he he deserves to go to jail. And, um, he deserves my I, do, I have a feeling like it's going to be within, he's not going to serve his full sentence. He's either going to, most of them he's don't. either going to pass away or, he's gonna, or it's going to be like, um, oh, like he, he, he was a good like prisoner and they'll just write him early or whatever. Um, it's like the honorable student in detention. Oh yeah. But, uh, so let's get up some, to some, uh, house cleaning, some Windex. Uh, no, um, so, update on some projects. So, the movie reviews that I'm going to be doing should be coming up soon. I'm going to say three weeks, four weeks. I'm going to start taping some soon. It's going to be not current. It's going to be some old reviews and 
maybe some trailer first looks at some trailers but i'm going to be doing some old movie reviews just because i really don't get to go to the movies a lot i try to go for the big movies so to see right. some of the smaller movies i can't really do reviews for but i'm going to be doing some old reviews like i'll be viewing halloween big shocker <laughs> uh seven four inches sinbad oh which boy. is a really old movie which i love it's got some great harry housing going I'm going to try to review Han Solo, the new Solo Star Wars movie. Okay. Stuff like that. So that stuff's going to be up on the, um, the YouTube, uh, next the, year. The YouTube channel and the website, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, Collective Gaming, finally. I was able to fix my little issue with the, with the camera and stuff. I'll be able to tape it. Me and uh, it's going to be me. I'm going to be it's the host. It's going to be me. It's going to be me. It's, it's going to be me as the host. My good friend James Fluke is going to be the co-host. He might not be on the first couple of episodes because he's having a kid. Congratulations. Yes, Jimmy. Uh, it's due any day. and I can't wait. It's going to be exciting. Uh, so he might not be on the first couple of episodes. I just got to figure out. If but his son's going to play video games yeah. with us. Oh, yeah. Well, definitely when something happens. At one month old. But uh, I don't, the first game that we are going to try to tape with Jimmy... Is going to be Maniac Mansion. Okay. Uh, which is his favorite game. He knows it inside out. And then we're going to play some of the usual games. Sonic the Hedgehog and other stuff. And because I have the EverDrive now. Ooh. We're going to do some obscure N64 games along with the N64 games. I'm not too sure if it's going to be like full walkthroughs. Or it's going to be cut off in parts. But we're going to experiment a little bit. And see what gets going on YouTube and stuff. Do you want to honor the viewers the opportunity to see me play Mario Party? I am go well on the way here. I thought of having a very special episode the next video game night, taping a very special episode of us playing Mario Party. It is gonna be a shit show, and I'm gonna try to stream it live on YouTube. Ooh, I gotta talk to Jimmy about that one and see how it has guys. I'm gonna practice for this one. This is the one time in life for video games I will actually give a fuck to win. And people have been asking about the video podcast, and we're going to be doing video video podcast. And for now, no. That was just a one-off special episode. To give it a shot. When we do do Tales from the Filmmakers, which I will be getting to in a second, uh, Tales from the Filmmakers will be video format episodes. So every couple months we'll be doing a Tales from the Filmmakers episode, reviewing our old movies, talking about from development all the way to uh, release and beyond, all of our movies. Um, also, I want to pose a question to the collective. Comment below on the YouTube, write to us on Twitter, comment on the Caputo Collective page or the Collective Podcast page. Do you want us to do episodes on my pre-film school films? Which I know Jerry would just love to see Galaxy Wars. Would love to see Still the, original, watch on Netflix, the, by the, the original two Black Sun movies that are the rip-offs. The old Halloween movie that I did, which is like five minutes long, which that would be just a quick episode. <laughs> um, and oh boy. as a special feature, if you want to get if you want to get me and James Joseph Faluca on Joseph. the podcast, and we will review KCW. <gasps> now, if you don't know what KCW is, way back when we used to do backyard wrestling, but we did it. It wasn't like, hey, point, click, camera, shoot, and, you know, oh, yeah, we're having fun. This was actual edited. Do had, I movie? Yeah. No, and do Final Cut. <laughs> I, it was, it was, it was, <laughs> you bastard, you just love to make fun of me about that. It was really, it was really produced quality, high quality, and uh, we did about, we have about, I want to say three or four years worth, it's not year, it's not, it's like monthly shows. We have three or four years worth of content. So if you guys really want me and me and Jimmy with Jerry to sit down and just talk about KCW and then maybe watch a couple of matches, I'm not going to watch the full shows because they're like three hours long, some of them, but just sit there and just pick and choose. Maybe we'll maybe we'll get Kenny on. We'll get Larry. Can you please do a review of my filming on the final KCW? Yeah, night? the uh, the blow off show. The I last felt show like it was did. extraordinary. Jerry, I still have the raw footage. So we'll get the behind the scenes of you being stupid. Being stupid. Doing all that wonderful stuff. But um, I don't have any questions today, Jerry. Some viewer questions. but So we're just going to do some plugs. And then we'll get out of here. Oh, baby. Uh, we have a website. It's uh, it's on Wix. 
if you type in uh, www. which I haven't bought the domain name yet, I'm going to buy it in a couple of months. But if you type in www. ccaputo1990 at gmail.com slash Caputo Collective, that's the website date. Or you go on Google, type in, type in Caputo Collective Productions, you'll find our website. We have a bunch of affiliates that have their content up. We have Guerrilla Revolution, yes. which has his trailer. Of uh, Last Laugh. I cannot wait till that comes out. Um, we have Red Ace. Red Ace does amazing. He does, he does brew reviews, which he just takes uh, drinks and does review. Very entertaining. Drinks. Very entertaining. He, he does movie reviews, first reactions. He does wrestling. Uh, we have um, Fabian, who is a uh, uh, complex studios. Yes. Um, he does... He doesn't do walkthroughs, but he does playthroughs and stuff of video games. And he does drawings, so you have a drawing. Fabian is a very talented artist that way. Oh, yeah, definitely. And he's got a um, public teas um, website where he sells his teas. Uh, I'll get that up on the feed when this feed gets released. Uh, we also have Art by Feluca, who's also talented. She does uh, drawings of wrestling and just comic book characters and stuff. You can follow her. On Instagram, Art by Feluca. Uh, same thing with Fabian. Uh, follow him on uh, Instagram at Complex Eighty Four Studios. Uh, follow Red Ace on um, Red Ace Productions. Your memory is good. Instagram. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't have any of this written down. Seriously. Uh, follow us on Fine Caputo Collective on Twitter. I thought you were gonna forget that one. Yeah. Fine Caputo Collective on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Caputo Collective Productions. Go to the Caputo Collective on Patreon, where you'll be able to get special content released once we start getting the ball rolling. Uh, like and subscribe to Caputo Productions on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Like the video. Subscribe. Comment. That helps us out a lot with what you think. Let's tell us what topic. Hey, look. Tell us what topics you want us to talk about. That's also cool, too. Um, and pledge to the Sing Till Sunrise event. Yes. It's a great cause. That's it for this episode, Jerry. Guys, we um, love you all. It's for the been future, five nice episodes for so the far. future, we're gonna try to get some interviews coming back. The Chris Marcianti one was not the only one that we're gonna do. We're gonna try to get uh, uh who I mentioned on the podcast. Uh, we're trying we're gonna try to get V Infuso on, social injustice warrior. Uh, we tried to get him on this week. He had a conflict. Um, we tried to get uh, Craig Lloydren. Craig Lloydren, who who we had here. Uh, before, Such an amusing guy. Before Very we, talented. Before we did the Chris Marciante interview, we had we, he was here. He was doing voiceover work for one of Chris's uh, releases that he's doing. It wasn't Last Laugh. It was another project he was doing, which we spent about a good maybe two hours on the floor laughing. Just bullshitting Just about Just bullshitting. Everything. And I invited him on the podcast. We're just going to try to get time and date going. But um, it, that will probably be like a really long podcast because him and you, us three were just – talk until thank god we got something done for us to actually do oh that. yeah that's uh and um we're, i'm gonna try to get chris back on for those two other ones and just gonna get a whole bunch of interviews going it's not gonna be topic based it's not gonna be topic based every week we're trying to we're gonna try to uh change it up every week and yeah so um also download the podcast from anchor that helps us out too and then there you go guys thank you so much and Stay tuned for episode six of Collective Podcasting. I don't know what, it, I don't know what it's going to be about, but it's going to be a killer. See ya. See ya on the Collective Podcast.